Okay, so what I have here is the Lin LM1 drum machine, serial number 365, and I'm using its trigger out to trigger an Oberheim DXA with MIDI. And what I'm going to compare in this video is the the difference in the hi-hat triggering between the LM1 and I think most other EEPROM based drum machines of the 1980s. So the LM1 is triggering, and I'll turn him on. Okay, so now he's triggering, and I'm going to show you the samples on the scope. And so what I have here on the top is a sample of the DX drum machine, and you can see that every time it's triggered, basically it's extremely consistent in terms of the actual sample that it plays back. And so I'm playing a closed hi-hat on both, and that's all I'm doing. And what you're hearing is actually the LM1's um, hi-hat. On the bottom trace, what I have is actually the LM1's hi-hat sample output. And so the way the LM1 works is it triggers the hi-hat over a continuous running output of the EEPROM. And so what that means is every time the trigger comes in, it applies the hi-hat envelope to the, the output of the EEPROM and plays that. And so what you get is a variable output of the hi-hat. And so this may be one of the reasons why the LM1 has a different kind of groove as far as a drum machine goes. So the DX, like all other of the EEPROM drum machines, sends out every time you trigger a hi-hat the exact same sound. But with the LM1, what you're getting is a triggering of a slightly different um, sample output every time you hit the hi-hat. And so I think this is probably most notable with kind of a long hi-hat envelope for the closed hi-hat. And that may be one of the reasons for why the LM1 has the groove. And again, on the top, you have the Oberheim DX closed hi-hat sample output. Very consistent, very stable in terms of sample playback. And on the bottom, you have the LM1's closed hi-hat sample output. Kind of moving around and, and kind of uh, changing sound slightly with each trigger. And that's it.